Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths, and we're going to be going through a massive interview that LaMonica Garrett did for the crossover. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so this interview is massive. I'm talking you scroll down for like two to three minutes. It's a big interview, so we're going to go through most of it, I'm not sure if we're going to read all of it, but, you know, the main points of interest to us. So, just a pointer before we head into what I'm actually going to be talking about. They talk about some Arrow stuff, and this week has been crazy for me, and that's why my Arrow review wasn't up this week. I simply haven't got round to watching it. I am going to try and watch it tonight or tomorrow morning, so I know what happens in the episode because I kind of have to know to make some of these videos but that's just my fault so I apologize if I don't have all the details but that's just because I had such a hectic week but I'm gonna be back watching them daily this week so don't worry about that hopefully I'll be on Eric's live stream this week so definitely will be watching before I go on that and so this is how the questions go this is the first one okay this is the first question the ending of Arrow season 8 episode 3 was crazy we saw in a flash of light that future Team Arrow and present Team Arrow are now together, and I'm guessing it's because of the Monitor. Why would he do that? So this is his response. I think everything that the Monitor does, there's a greater purpose for it. Whether it's to get more out of a certain character of what he needs, or just, you know, even disrupting. That would be getting something out of a particular character that he needs to be fulfilled before the crisis starts. So pretty much everything he does is leading up to Crisis, and he needs all hands on deck and the right mental state to approach the Crisis, so it's not just physical, it's mental, and his main subject for Crisis is Oliver Queen. So there's nothing really too much to break down in this, apart from the fact that, yes, the greater purpose the Monitor has behind each action he does is definitely a thing that you have to consider with every move he makes, because he is being so meticulous about where he pops up and you know the different things he makes people do so I think you must keep that in mind when looking at his actions okay so now moving on to the second question the last time we saw the monitor was at the end of Arrow season 8 episode 2 where is he going to pop up next the flash Arrow this is the response he's making his rounds and I think the way they sprang it out the monitor in different TV shows in different times it's not oversaturated till you get sick of seeing him and right when you forget about him he shows back up they do a great job of that because whenever you see him it's reminding the audience as well as the characters on the show that this crisis is looming the closer it gets you'll start seeing more and more of him so yeah basically what we're getting out of this is he's going to pop up on other shows i do believe he's actually going to be in supergirl around episode seven time i could be wrong about that but that's what i've heard so he's going to be definitely popping up a lot on arrow and the Flash. I'm not sure about Batwoman. He could do. He could make an appearance, but it's less likely that he is going to. But they are doing a good job, apparently, of, you know, placing him in certain episodes, certain points. But, you know, not popping him up all the time. And that's what you can get from the episodes he's been in. Okay, moving on to the next question. Oliver doesn't really trust the Monitor anymore because of what he read in the League of Assassins records. How will the Monitor's relationship with Oliver play out moving forward? And so this is his response. I think that's the fun thing about it. If Oliver was all in on what the Monitor was doing and telling him to do, it wouldn't be as much fun to see what happens with it. So naturally, he has people in his ears like Diggle telling him, don't trust this guy, you create your own destiny, you don't have to listen to him. And he's one of his close friends. You have people around you telling you otherwise and you're already starting to doubt and now your kids pushed into this timeline that might be the final straw he's not in a good place right now so i think it's natural for him to distrust the monitor but the monitor knows what he's doing it might not be the right way of doing it but it's all for a greater purpose so basically what we can get out of this is essentially oliver doesn't trust him and he has obviously people like diggle telling him don't trust this guy but he kind of wants to but then you know what he saw last episode He's sort of in a sticky place with his trust of the Monitor, but you know, he'll go back to him. Okay, next question, as the audience, should we trust the Monitor? So the response is, I don't know if I would trust him. I don't know if it'd be all in with him. It's like one of those situations that you keep an eye on. 
he's kind of R-rated, not PG-13. It's like, I don't know if I trust this guy yet, but I'm going to see how this plays out a little bit further. Moving on to the next question, that's true. Because it's still a little early before the crossover, a lot can happen. His response, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening before then. So you can't be all in on hating him right now. And then he does something and turns everything around. Oh yeah, I liked him all along anyway. No, you didn't. Next question. I wanted to talk about Harbinger because we saw at the end of Arrow Season 8 Episode 2 the meeting between Lila and the Monitor. What was it like bringing that iconic duo from the comics to life? This is the response. That was one of my favourite moments this season as far as the Monitor was involved in. When I read that I got really excited because that was the moment as an actor and as the Monitor of like, alright the Crisis is really about to be here because Harbinger and the Monitor are two key figures in Crisis. So this sort of, I guess kind of confirms that this version of Lila may be Harbinger, like because he definitely infers there's a past relationship with them so maybe she actually turns into Harbinger or it, you know it could be a completely different version of Lila that is Harbinger like in the comics. Okay so moving on he says them meeting for the first time that moment was wild for me I knew it was coming because I filmed it but when I watched it when Lila is walking and she's speaking to someone the monitor comes out of the shadows that moment was like yes the crisis is here that was awesome. Okay, so that's really interesting. Let's move on to the next bit. Will we get to see the past of Lila and the Monitor at all? The response is, you will get to know more about who the Monitor is and where he came from. So, I guess some backstory, right? A lot of what we will fill in the blanks for other pieces that may be missing will be told. But you'll get to know who the Monitor was back in the day and how he became who he is and what he is about. You might f even feel some empathy for him, some compassion. So that's really interesting. So he's basically confirming there is going to be some sort of backstory. I'm guessing that's going to be on Arrow. Okay, moving on to the next bit. Did you study a lot of the comics before you got a feel for both the Anti-Monitor and the Monitor? He says, I was familiar with both of them. I was familiar with Crisis back in the day. And then after I found out I was playing the Monitor, I went back and read Crisis all over again. That was pretty much the Monitor's story. He appeared a little bit before Crisis and that, and then that was it during Crisis. But with the Anti-Monitor, I have been really familiar with him. He's been wreaking havoc in the Green Lantern world through animations and the cartoons he's been around. Okay, so now moving on to the next question. In the comics, the Monitor is killed by Harbinger, spoiler alert guys, who is being possessed by the Anti-Monitor. While the Flash and Supergirl also die, basically a lot of people die, a lot of crap happens, how much would you say the Arrowverse's version of Crisis differs from the comics and how is the Monitor different? Okay, so this is the answer. They did a lot of things pretty much identical to the comic books. As much as you can. It's hard to adapt everything to the screen, but without saying what's going to happen, they are going to hit a lot of things on the heads, some stuff they just couldn't do. I think the way it plays out will be very satisfying for the audience, diehard Crisis comic book fans. They'll see a lot of similarities in some stuff just for the sake of story. They had to deviate it from it on the screen. But it's still a great story and makes sense in the way it's told. Okay, so yeah, obviously some stuff is going to change. And stuff's going to change from how the TV show was setting up Crisis to be. Like, we're not even sure if the reverse flash is going to show up. You know, that was the big thing in the Crisis newspaper for all these years. And... Obviously stuff is going to change from the comic books because you know, they can't do everything They can't have all these characters in and things like that. So, you know, that's without a doubt You know, we all kind of knew that. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So He says he has read all five of the scripts and everything like that Like the layers were unpeeling even as a fan, you know when you read in the trades like oh this person is attached This person's now attached there were people in Crisis Crossover that attached that I had no idea. So that's really interesting. I didn't say the question there, but, you know, that was his answer to a question regarding, you know, if he had all of the script and everything. Yes, he does. Okay, so going on to the last question we're going to go over. So this is the question. Going over to the Anti-Monitor, can you say when we get to meet him? So the response is, I don't want to give that away, but I think it's just like when the Monitor was introduced right before the crossover last year, that teaser with John Wesley's ship when he destroys Earth-90, 
that comes out of left field and it was exciting jaws dropped when that scene happened like what's going on who's that and he goes on to say I think the anti-monitor he has a moment when he does make his appearance his presence is already being felt on the current episodes and when it comes closer and closer his presence will really be felt but I think when you finally see him it's all gonna pay off in that one moment it's an awesome scene so this is him talking about the first time the anti-monitor is actually gonna show up I think this is the most interesting question and the most interesting answer because he references how the monitor showed up so I'm guessing he's going to have a mini scene towards the end of like maybe episode 7 of Arrow or The Flash or something like that and I think that's when the anti-monitor is going to show up and it's going to be a scene kind of similar to the Earth-90 destruction scene that we got just before Elseworlds last year. So really exciting stuff. Check out this article. It's on TV Fanatic. You can check out. It'll be in the link in the description below. I am loving Crisis and the build up right now. I'm super excited for the crossover. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.